Hi there, Smart Driver Rick with Smart Drive Test. Ooh, it's test day. You can feel the jitters. You can feel the anxiety. Yes, indeed. Had a comment from Sabretooth. He wanted me to do a mock road test to show him and others what they needed to do on road test day. On road test day, remember the first principle. Breathe. In through the nose, out through the mouth, and breathe all the way to your navel. This will help you to relax. It will help you to relieve some of the tension and some of the anxiety that you're going to feel on test day. If you can relax, you're going to do better on your test. And I know all about the jitters and all about the anxiety because I've done no less than a dozen road tests, different higher class licenses, my car license when I was 16, and I had to do two or three tests when I got my instructor's license. Every time, I was anxious. Now, keep in mind that for the purposes of your road test, your job is to take away the examiner's right to fail you. That's all you have to do. Nothing more, nothing less. And if you've practiced, practiced, practiced up until road test day, you're going to do what you've practiced, and that's not going to be a hard job. So stick around. We're going to do a mock road test. Be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Driver. Welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about how to do a mock road test. The first thing you need to do is you need to show up at least 45 minutes to 30 minutes early for your appointment because you have to go into the driving uh, licensing center and you have to check in. Now, when you come to the licensing center, make sure that you bring identification. You're going to need at least two pieces of identification. And what I tell uh, students is to bring three pieces of identification in case for whatever reason one piece isn't accepted. So bring three pieces of identification and don't forget your money. Yes, it's not free. You have to pay a fee whether you're at the DMV the MTO in Ontario or ICBC here in British Columbia so make sure you bring money as well before you leave in the morning whether you're with a school or you're taking your own vehicle make sure you do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle before you show up for road test day make sure all the lights are working the horn is working the seat belts are working the seat belts are secure make sure all the rubbish <laughs> is out of the car because you are not going to get an examiner in your vehicle if you have you know fast food containers up to the knees in the in the footwells of your vehicle so make sure you clean it out and keep it clean it's going to leave a better impression with the examiner as well leave roughy at home don't bring your pets don't bring the cat don't have anybody else in the vehicle it's just you and the examiner so when you show up for road test day you go in and check in just one other note about pre-trip inspection. If you're going with the driving school, ensure that you ask the driving instructor if in fact he or she did do a pre-trip inspection on the vehicle in the morning. Because oftentimes, if you've got a signal out, for example, or a brake light, they will not let you go on a road test. But if you detect that during the pre-trip inspection before you show up for your road test, it's easily fixed and you can go for your road test and it's not going to create more angst on the day of your road test. So you go in, the examiner is going to come out, they'll find the vehicle, he or she is going to go through a pre-trip inspection with you, they're going to get you to check the signals, the lights, the windshield wipers, and the horn. They're going to get you to do that little mini pre-trip inspection. Oftentimes what they'll do is they'll tell you to roll down your window and they'll indicate what they want you to do. Left signal, right signal, brake lights, those types of things. If the vehicle doesn't pass a pre-trip inspection, they are not going to take you out on a road test. And unfortunately, I've seen that time and time again, waiting at test centers for students to come back on licenses. And one of the most awful ones I've seen is somebody show up with an Alberta vehicle and they're not required to have a plate on the front they borrow their uncle's car and whatever and they show up and because they don't have a plate on the front in British Columbia, they can't go for the road test because it doesn't pass standards that set out and policy by that licensing center. So make sure you do a pre-trip inspection. I can't stress that enough on test day. When you show up at the licensing center, oftentimes there's going to be designated parking. Here in Vernon, we don't have designated parking, it's street parking. And a lot of the smaller licensing centers, it's going to be street parking. They're not going to have a parking lot with their own designated parking. But if they do have designated parking for licensing, 
license exams rather, make sure you back into the space because you're just too nervous at the beginning of the test. So back into the space and if you go with the driving school they're going to make you to back in anyway. That way it gives you a bit of practice of where you have to back in. That way you can drive out. At the end of the road test when you come back they will make you back into the space. Here in Vernon I'm not going to do that because I, it's street parking and they don't have designated parking but know that at some of the centers you're going to have designated parking so make sure you park there for the purpose of the road test so the examiner can find you and take you out on your road test. One important note for road test day, if you make a mistake, keep going. Don't dwell on the mistake because if you dwell on the mistake, you're going to make more mistakes. So just let it go quickly, carry on with the road test. You do not stop until the examiner, he or she, tells you to stop. Otherwise, just keep going. When you get back to the examination office, they will indicate whether they saw it or not. Because sometimes they may not even see the mistake that you have made. They may be looking out the window or thinking about something else. So there's oftentimes some chance that they didn't even see it. So just keep going. And again, as I said, we do what we have practiced. So if you've practiced, practiced, practiced up to road test day, you're going to be great. As well, what they're going to do, they're going to get in the vehicle. They're going to give you their little spiel. They're going to tell you that they'll give you plenty of advance notice of where to turn at the intersection. Oftentimes what they're going to say is, at the intersection, turn left. And they'll give you a couple blocks notice. If it's just an intersection, it's not a controlled intersection. As well, they'll say, at the controlled intersection, turn right. When they say controlled intersection, what they're doing is getting you to sort out whether it's a stop sign, a yield, or a traffic light, and how to deal with that situation. So know that if it's a a controlled intersection, it's a stop sign, a traffic light, or a yield. So that's the other information that they're going to give you. They're going to tell you to obey all traffic signs and obey all laws when you're driving. So again, it comes back to my tagline. Pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. As well, if you end up with an emergency vehicle on your road test, stop. If you're not already stopped, make sure you pull over to the nearest shoulder and stop as soon as possible. And do the best you can Make sure you lots of shoulder checking. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the cameras here. We're gonna go for a drive. All right, so the examiner's gotten in the car, giving you the spiel, obey all the traffic signs. They'll give you plenty of notice about directions at the intersection, turn left, turn right, obey all the traffic laws, obey all the rules, and has indicated for you to proceed up to the intersection and turn right and then turn left at the next intersection. So we're gonna proceed. Mirror signal shoulder check, it is clear to go. Shoulder check again immediately before leaving. Mirror signal shoulder check turning right. Moving to the right of our lane just when the stop line moves under the front of the vehicle. We can't see so we're going to proceed forward. Treat it as a yield, I can see. And we're proceeding. And we have a pedestrian walking across the road. We're just gonna slow down until the pedestrian attains the curb. Stopping so the stop line rolls under the front of the vehicle and we've positioned the vehicle to the left of our lane. And again, I can't see because of the parked vehicles here. So I need to creep forward. And that vehicle has proceeded. The other vehicle across from me has the right of way. And the person really doesn't know the traffic rules because they're going straight. And again, I got caught out here because there was a car coming. Fortunately, there's nobody in the intersection. And that's gonna happen on your road test. I was scanning the railway crossing there. The examiner has indicated for me to proceed straight through the controlled intersection here that you're going to have to move out into the intersection and sometimes you're going to have to stop in the lane. You're already committed to the intersection, but you can't pull out across in front of that car that was coming. You couldn't see it in the cameras because it was coming from the right side of my vehicle, but you're going to have to do that. Just stop because you need to give the right of way to other traffic and otherwise you're going to risk a crash. So here you can see at the intersection it's busy. And I stop so I can see the tires of the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the road. And when you're stopping in traffic, that's where you want to stop. And if you're driving a manual transmission, you cannot roll backwards. 
on a road test and it is not North American culture to put on the handbrake in the UK and Europe they have a driving culture of driving manuals where when they stop they put on the handbrake we don't do that in North America so just know that difference and I have to slow here and we're scanning the roundabout to the left and to the right and we signal the examiner has indicated that they want us to go straight through scanning the crosswalk scanning the crosswalk scanning the intersections and assuming 50 kilometers an hour or 30 miles an hour as you will be doing in the United States and I have temporary work signs here you can see and it says prepare to stop and we're slowing right down because we have to do a deviate out to the right and the flagger has indicated for me to stop and I've slowed right down and again you can see the playground sign here that's 30 kilometers an hour so it's 30 kilometers an hour past the playground and that is kind of a deceiving sign because it's a cautionary sign that warns you of the playground but it's a regulatory sign underneath the bottom of the playground sign so you need to make sure that you do 30 kilometers an hour past the playground if you exceed the speed limit for any length of time that's an automatic fail on a road test so we're past the park now so we can resume 50 kilometers an hour The examiner has told us to go left at the controlled intersection. We stop at the stop line. As you can see, the stop line is quite faded here. It's there when it just rolls underneath the front of the vehicle. It's an always stop. So we can see all the traffic has stopped. And we're in a school zone, which is in effect from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And again, it's 30 kilometers an hour in the school zone. Scanning the intersection, scanning the crosswalk, 30 kilometers an hour, the examiner has indicated to go left at the controlled intersection. And we're stopping behind the traffic so we can see the tires making clear contact with the pavement. And we need to come to a complete stop when the stop line just rolls under the front of the vehicle. We can't see so we creep forward. We have traffic. The way is clear, we proceed shoulder checking. And the examiner has indicated to go right at the next intersection. I wasn't sure what that pedestrian was doing, so I covered the brake and actually slowed down a little bit. Mirror signal shoulder check for the right, steering through the intersection. Scanning my mirrors, making sure there isn't any traffic. And the examiner has indicated to go right at the next intersection. Mirror signal shoulder check. Shoulder check again, immediately before turning. that he or she wants you to parallel park off the red truck and we can see that the red truck is wide which indicates that we're going to have to go f deeper into the space so we pull up approximately three feet you can just see the back corner in the back window into reverse immediately right signal pick out my 45 which is the front door of that house scan behind me all the way to the right on the steering wheel until I'm facing directly, which is right there. Bring the steering wheel back to straight and back up until I'm most of the way down the hood on this one because the truck is really wide. So right about there, all the way to the left. Scanning, scanning, scanning. And I'm straight in the space and I pull forward until I can just see the top of the bumper right there. And I tell the examiner that I'm done. I secure the vehicle in park, parking brake on, 
and I would turn the vehicle off and tell the examiner that I'm finished. But, and usually the examiner will open the door and see how far you are from the curb. So that's how you parallel park. And now the examiner will tell you, okay, we're gonna resume off with the parking brake into reverse for an automatic and a manual look behind you and you're gonna have to move back and we roll back mirror signal shoulder check to leave the space nothing coming shoulder check again and we proceed that we go right at the tra at the controlled intersection mirror signal shoulder check moving to the right of our lane stopping so the front tires so the stop line just disappears under the front of the vehicle I can't see and we can proceed so we slow to 30 kilometers an hour and the examiner has told us to go right again at this traffic light and we're in a school zone the school is right there creep out no one there and we proceed and 30 kilometers an hour is the speed because we're in a school zone crosswalk and in British Columbia they don't put end school zone signs in so we look for the back of the other Pentagon sign which is right there on the left which indicates that we can now resume speed and we resume speed Examiner has indicated for us to go left. We turn left here. The way is clear. And we can go slow because it's the road is narrow, there's lots of parked vehicles. And again, we're back into the 30 kilometer hour playground zone. signal shoulder check the examiner has told us to go right stop so the front of the stop line just goes under the front of the vehicle move forward so I can see pedestrians in the crosswalk and the examiner has told us to go left at this intersection we stop so we can see the tires of the vehicle making clear contact with the pavement in front of us and it's still 30 kilometers an hour 30 kilometers an hour through the playground until we're to the end of the playground which is on our left here have construction workers in with the slow sign but not really paying attention we're still doing 30 kilometers an hour it's resumed to 50 kilometers an hour now that we're past the, uh, the playground and past the construction workers scanning the intersections we have a pedestrian on the left the pedestrian is good the road is clear. I have a controlled intersection up here. The examiner has indicated for us to proceed straight through the controlled intersection. On the other side of the controlled intersection, we have a school zone sign. It's not a, it's not a reduced speed. It's just indicating that there is a school in the area. Traffic is clear. We've come to a complete stop. We can proceed. It's faint here with the lines, but you can see that there is a, um, a cyclist lane here, a bicycle lane here on the right, and we move over scanning. And the examiner has
has indicated that he or she wants us to park on the right here just past the intersection mirror signal shoulder check and we proceed past the intersection mirror signal shoulder check in to the space and just before the vehicle straightens all the way to the right and then all the way to the left because we're parking downhill with a curb into the curb until the front tire touches into your first gear or park parking brake on and tell the examiner that you're finished the examiner will tell you to proceed so you just re release this mirror signal shoulder check turn the wheels to the left and when it is way to go we proceed I'm driving it's just starting to become winter here and the, the windows are becoming fogged up you may have to work the defrost controls as I just did there to keep your vision and being able to see and communicate to other drivers mirror signal shoulder check stopping so the stop line just rolls under the front of the vehicle we stop we can see I'm gonna wait for that vehicle because it's going fairly quickly Shoulder check immediately before proceeding. Proceed into the right hand lane. We're going downhill, so our speed is going to accelerate. So we're monitoring our speed 50 kilometers an hour, 50 kilometers an hour, 30 miles an hour in the city unless otherwise posted. Mirror signal shoulder check. We have a pedestrian. The pedestrian is looking around. So we're just gonna slow down and make sure that the pedestrian is staying where that should be. No vehicles, it's a yield sign, so we don't have to stop. And again, there are no speed signs along here, so 50 kilometers an hour, unless otherwise posted. And it's easy to, to lose your speed here because it's downhill and the traffic flow is much higher than 50 kilometers an hour. So it's important, especially on a road test, that you practice these areas because you're gonna get caught out if you start following traffic or you get distracted, that you're gonna go faster than what you need to. And this is the reason <laughs> that, yes, I'm reshooting this because uh, the first time I come down here, I was uh, speeding, following the other traffic. I was narrating on the camera and not focusing on my driving and reverted to social driving. So 50 kilometers an hour, examiner has indicated at the second traffic light that he or she wants us to turn left. And again, I'm speeding. So see, I started following the traffic and my speed went up. That's okay, you're generally not gonna lose demerits for that if you catch yourself right away and bring your vehicle back to the posted speed limit. The examiner will not assign demerits for that. As long as the he or she knows that you're controlling the vehicle and working to attempt to control the speed, and the examiner has indicated that we're gonna turn left at the next traffic light, and we need to move over to the left-hand lane, so we turn our signal on to ask other drivers to help us out. And again, the vehicle behind us has created a gap for us because we asked to move over. We leave our signal on all the way into the other lane. Cancel our signal when we get into the other lane. And the traffic is stopping and there's somebody here that wants to turn left, turn right in front of us. And we're not gonna block this, so we're gonna stay back. And the other vehicle has proceeded. The traffic in front of us is moving forward and we can proceed. Remember, it doesn't take any time out of your day to be nice to other people. And the overhead lane signs indicate lane use here. The right-hand lane goes straight through. Mirror signal shoulder check. The examiner indicates that we want to go right at the next intersection. We put our right signal on immediately. Mirror signal shoulder check across into the other lane. Mirror signal shoulder check. Shoulder checking across the bicycle lane. We have pedestrian on the island, the traffic island, but it looks like they're going the other way. There's nobody in the crosswalk. The way is clear. We have a yield sign, we can proceed. And 50 kilometers.
dollars an hour. The grind, light is green. Pedestrian is good. Nothing at the crosswalks. Nothing at the intersections. 50 kilometers an hour. We're just under 50 kilometers an hour. 30 miles an hour in the United States. Nothing at the intersection. Pedestrians are all good. The examiner has indicated we want to go right at the next intersection. Pedestrian is good. Mirror signal shoulder check approximately half a block. Moving to the right of our lane and stopping so the stop line is just under the front of the vehicle. We're going to move forward so we can see. If the way is clear, we can go, but we're not proceeding into the intersection in case pedestrians show up. The kids are all good. And it looks like the traffic is going to clear. No. And you, sometimes you're going to need to lean forward so you can see the other traffic without actually moving the vehicle forward. And the way is clearing. Way is clear, shoulder check, and we proceed. that we go left at the intersection, mirror signal shoulder check into the turning lane as soon as possible. Stopping so the front crosswalk line rolls just under the front of the vehicle, come to a complete stop. And the way is clear and we proceed. signal shoulder check into the space and pull up stop into park parking brake on cancel your signal and turn the vehicle off and you are done your road test and at this juncture the examiner will indicate whether you have passed or failed and give you feedback quick review of road test day remember to breathe because you're going to be anxious you're going to be tense as well your job on road test day is to do nothing more than to take away the examiner's right to fail you. In other words, if you've practiced, because driving is not a spectator sport, and practice well, you're going to do what you've practiced for the purposes of the road test. Speed and space management are your two biggest components of your road test. Maintain the posted speed limit or the traffic flow, whichever is less. And stay away from other traffic, road users, and fixed objects. Pedestrians, before you turn, you're going to need one lane of traffic between you and pedestrians. Stop at the correct position at stop signed intersections and obey the speed limits, especially when you get into school zones. It's going to be 30 kilometers an hour. Or if you get around a playground that has a speed sign underneath the playground cautionary sign. It's a kind of a tricky sign because it's a cautionary sign with a small rectangular regulatory sign underneath. Parking. Slow speed maneuvers, don't get too worried if you parallel park and you hit the curb. Just pull ahead and adjust the vehicle. Hill parking, remember the three in one rule. Three times it's in towards the shoulder of the road. The only time that it's out towards the center of the road is uphill with a curb. And if you have a curb, you're gonna secure the vehicle against the curb. Three point turns as well. There's another video here on the channel. So those are your main slow speed maneuvers that you're gonna to have to do. U-turns, three point turns, parallel park, and hill parking. Otherwise, speed and space management, stopping at controlled and uncontrolled intersections. You don't have to stop at uncontrolled intersections if the way is clear, but speed and space management, prove that you're safe. And as I said, if you're not taking driving lessons, go out and do a mock road test with a driving school before road test day. They will be able to identify the weaknesses in your preparation for road test and be able to, you'll be able to fix that and strengthen that as well. Shoulder check, shoulder check, shoulder check. Every time that you move the vehicle laterally, make sure you shoulder check. And if there's designated parking at the licensing center, back into the space that way you can drive out at the end of the test they're going to make you back into the parking space as a demonstration of due care and control of the vehicle and that you can reverse park the vehicle 
okay some of these bigger licensing centers are going to be busy so go in and practice parking on the weekends there's no one there on the weekend so you can go in and practice parking in these parking lots on the weekend question for my smart drivers do you have any tips for drivers preparing for a road test leave a comment down in the comment section there all of that helps out the new drivers working towards getting their license i'm rick with smart drive test thanks very much for watching if you like what you see here share subscribe leave a comment down in the comment section as well hit that thumbs up button. Check out all the videos here on the channel if you're working towards a license or starting a career as a truck or bus driver. Lots of great information here. As well, head over to my website. More great information over there. Stick around to the end of the video. Some funny bits and links to the other videos and to my website. Thanks again for watching. Good luck on your road test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now. It's test day. Oh my God, breathe. <laughs> What did that guy say in that video? What do I do? Okay, okay, I can, I can do this. I can do this. Okay, here we go.